Hello everyone, in this video you will learn how to identify the nerve plexus and branches in the flat model. You need to remember that you start counting on the left side and not on the right because on the right side you cannot see C1. So on the left side you can. So you start C1, C2, C3, C4 and half of C5, which is up to here, it belongs to the cervical plexus. The second half of C5 right, starting right here, and C6, C7, C8, and T1, they belong to the brachial plexus. And you need to remember that the brachial plexus is subdivided into trunks, and then afterwards you have the subdivision into cords and then into nerves that you are looking into this. Now, I would like to share with you this little mnemonic. One way you can remember that you have plexus and then the, after the plexus we have trunks and then after that we have cords is if you remember post-traumatic car crash. So you have the PTC. First you have the plexus, afterwards you have the trunks and then you have the cords. Going back to the flat model, here we see the C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, right? The first half of C5 belongs to the cervical plexus. The second half C6, C7, C8, and T1 is the brachial plexus. Now, you see that we have a little mesh here? This mesh will give you the delimitation for when we have a trunk, which will be before the mesh, or when we have a cord, which will be after the mesh. So here we can identify the superior trunk, the middle trunk, and the inferior trunk. Looking on the right side, here you can see, so, if you count, you know, C2, C3, C4, first half of C5, then you have second half of C5 and C6, C7, C8, and T1. So these right here, before the mesh, will have here the superior trunk, here will be the middle trunk, and here we'll have the inferior trunk. After the mesh, we have the cords. This is the lateral cord, this one, lateral cord, then we have the posterior cord, and this is the medial cord. So there are two ways you can remember the cords. One way is that the lateral cord is the most lateral one, and the medial cord is the one that's close to the middle, right? The midline of your body, and the posterior is in between. Or the other way you can remember is that this is a flat model, but in real life we are not flat, right? So the posterior cord is really posterior in relationship to the lateral and the medial. And when they made the flat model, they just squeezed the posterior cord in between the lateral and the medial, and that's why you see the posterior cord in the middle, okay? Going back to this side, this would be the lateral cord, the posterior cord, and the middle, medial cord. Now you see here this other mesh? This other mesh is what will give you the delimitation between a cord and a nerve. So before the mesh, we have cords, and after the mesh, we have nerves. And on the right side, here you have the mesh. Before the mesh, you have the cords. After the mesh, you have the nerves. So let's start looking at the nerves. The nerve that goes around and wraps around your axilla, as you can see here, this will be the axillary nerve. Now, this nerve that you see going down here and stopping on the shaft of the humerus, that's the musculocutaneous nerve. And if you go and you grab your biceps, all that sensation you have is because of the musculocutaneous nerve. So you remember, you go and you grab your biceps and you say musculocutaneous nerve, musculocutaneous nerve. And you remember the musculocutaneous nerve is the one that stops on the shaft of your humerus, okay? This other nerve that you see here going down in the middle, this is what we name median nerve. Median ends with the letter N, and nerve starts with the letter N. So you remember that you have a median nerve, and you have here a medial, with the letter L at the end, cord. So you have a medial cord, and here you see the median nerve, okay? Make sure you remember to differentiate. You cannot say 
medial nerve. Is medial nerve and medial cord. This one that's on the ulna side is the ulnar nerve. And now we get to the radial nerve. So if you follow here, this, this line right here, you see that goes below and continues here, this is the radial nerve. But the radial nerve is split into two. And we have the superficial radial nerve, this one, this one that keeps going down. And we have the deep radial nerve that goes here and then goes deep into your forearm. So the easiest way for you guys to remember how to differentiate the deep branch of the radial nerve and the superficial branch of the radial nerve is if you are the nerve, okay? So if you are the radial nerve and you're right here and I tell you go superficially, the only way you have to go is going down superficially, right? On the radius side. Now, if you're right here and I tell you go deep, the only option you have is to go deep and then you appear on the posterior aspect of your forearm. And that's what happens. So the superficial branch of the radial nerve keeps going down superficially. And the deep branch of the radial nerve, it goes down and goes deep and appears on the posterior aspect of your forearm. And that's what we see in the flat model. So again, this is the radial nerve. And here we have where it splits. So this one that goes down superficially is the superficial branch of the radial nerve. This one here that goes down and disappears is because it went deep. And then this is the deep branch of the radial nerve. Now, if we come here on the left side, we can identify the same nerves, but the only difference that this uh, upper limb, here we have a pronated forearm. So we are looking at the posterior aspect of our upper limb, right? Here below the elbow. So if you look here, this one that wraps around, this is the axillary nerve. This one that goes down and stays on top of the humerus is the musculocutaneous nerve. Now, this one here that you see going down, going underneath and here, and it's splitting into two, this will be the radial nerve. This branch that you see here, that's on top now, is because we are on the posterior aspect of your forearm. This will be the deep branch of the radial nerve. And this one that goes here and is superficial, this will be the superficial branch of the radial nerve. This nerve that goes down here in the middle is the median nerve. And lastly, this one that you see here that reappears down here, this is the ulnar nerve. So now we are going down here to check the lumbar plexus. But you will not be asked to identify the lumbar plexus in the model. But if we tell you to identify the femoral nerve, which is this one that stays on top of the femur, and you can see it as well right here. Or we tell you to identify the obturator nerve, which is this one, okay, this and this, because it's the one that goes through the obturator foramen. You need to remember that this nerve, these two nerves are the ones that belong to the lumbar plexus. So if you have a question that points, for example, a pin to this nerve and asks you, tell me the name of the nerve and also the name of the plexus, you need to remember that this is the obturator nerve and the obturator nerve is part of the lumbar plexus. Now, the same thing will happen for the sacral plexus. In the sacral plexus, we have the sciatic nerve, which is this thick nerve you see here. And we also see the sciatic nerve on this side, okay? Then afterwards here, the sciatic nerve branches and gives rise to the tibial nerve. And the tibial nerve is the nerve that's posterior to the tibia bone. So this is the tibia and this is the tibial nerve. 
If you look here, another branch is the common fibular nerve. And we say common fibular nerve because it splits into the deep fibular nerve and the superficial fibular nerve. This nerve that we see here on top of the tibia, okay, this will be the deep fibular nerve. If you look on this side, you have here, this is the common fibular nerve, and then we have the two branches of the common fibular nerve. The branch that stays on top of the fibula is the superficial fibular nerve. The branch that goes deep, and because it went deep, it went on top of the tibia, it will be the deep fibular nerve. So remember, the one that you have on top of the tibia in this side is the deep fibular nerve, which is equivalent to this one that is on top of the tibia in this side. So the same thing we did for the radial nerve. Now we have to do for the fibular nerve. So you need to be the nerve. If you are the fibular nerve and you are right here and I tell you go superficial, you just keep going on top of the fibula. But if you are the fibular nerve and you tell you go deep, your only option is to go deep and then you appear on top of the tibia bone that's right next to it, right? So the deep fibular nerve is the one that you're seeing going deep and then it stays on top of the tibia. And the superficial fibular nerve is the one that you go down superficially on top of the fibula. The two things we are missing now is the conus medullaris. And as you can see, it was named conus medullaris because you can see it looks like a cone. And afterwards, right here, we see the coda equina because it looks like a tail of a horse. So equina recalls horse, right? You have the equestrian, which is the horseback rider. And then here you have like this, all these nerves, which we name coda equina, resembles the tail of a horse.